Welcome to Sales Velocity TV, where we pull back the curtain on how the top businesses in the world sell more with less resistance. Bringing over 50 plus years of combined sales experience and over 100 million in revenue generated, please welcome the hosts of Sales Velocity TV and two incredibly entertaining gentlemen, Andrew Cass and Aaron Parkinson. Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of Sales Velocity TV. It's a part two of a two-part series here on podcasting. If you missed the last episode, we dug into the number one podcast in history, the Joe Rogan Experience, number one meaning the most viewership, the most eyeballs, the most popular, a little bit controversial, but not as much as the fake media likes to portray it as. Great, great content. The, the most trusted news source in America right now. Now the number one rated news source above even, and we did the Nielsen ratings last week. If you didn't catch that one, make sure you do, because now we're going to get into the nitty gritty today. I'm excited about this, Aaron, because I've run two podcasts in the last five or six years, this being the second one. And I have some really good knowledge on how to do it, what to do, what not to do, how to make it less intimidating. I think that most business owners and entrepreneurs would love to have a show. They'd love to get their voice out there, but it's like, where do I begin? The tech is overwhelming. I don't know what to say. Where would I come up with content? So we're going to address the how-to today. So this will be more of a tactical episode where last week was more of big picture strategy, why you need a show, how you can get a tremendous following and, and, and build authority and visibility with the show. We did all that in the last episode. I think that was, six, I don't remember what number it was, but it's at salesvelocitytv.com. And today we're going to dig into how to make it happen, man. So let's uh, let's do it. I'm just wondering why. I'm just checking my audio here. I think we're good. I don't know why. Oh, your audio's great. Audio's good. Okay. I was just making sure the show was actually live. It does say live up there. It so says live. So All right, cool. Know. I was just looking. I always have my I always have the show on the phone over here so I can see what viewers see uh, just in see, case there's you're, a... You're already giving away one of the tips. That's it, right? So just in case there's a glitch, I can I can I always put myself in the... And I did this with webinars, by the way. Come on, I've done a lot of webinars over the years. And I always, you know, always want to make sure you're on your own webinar and you're attending your own show as if you're a attendee because it's nice to see what they see. If something goes wrong, you and I have admittedly, jokingly in the past done shows and webinars and like there's no screen showing or the audio's not on and you're like 40 minutes into this great right presentation or whatever and it just doesn't happen. So we'll talk about all the different tips and tricks today. And I want to start off, I'm just looking at my notes. I want to start off with the why here, right? Like why do you, why you want to have a podcast? So if you're listening to this and you're like, I listen to a bunch of podcasts, that sounds really cool. I could never do that. Or why would I want to do that? Let's talk about that first, Aaron, because you and I are big media guys. And we are big on having a balanced media approach. And the podcast, as I mentioned in the last episode, has arrived as a go-to media. And it's a phenomenal, phenomenal way to build, like I said, visibility, credibility, trust, but also to get your voice, your philosophy, your belief system out into the marketplace, specifically into your niche, so people can learn about you because at the end of the day, people will buy from people they know, like, and trust. And this is a great way to become known, liked, and trusted. You agree, buddy? Yeah, I feel like, yeah, can you hear me okay? Yeah, do you, are you getting a delay on your end or are you good? You uh, there was good? a tiny delay for a second. Okay, you seem good to me. Aaron, if you're if you're you're listening, he's, uh, what are you doing, a big renovation over there or something with the offices and the internet's a little shaky? Yeah, we, we we're, I'm, I'm actually in my wife's office, which we just renovated right now and, and they're building, you know, the same version essentially for me down in my office, which I'll be back in tonight. And the, uh, the downside, and I think this is something we can address as well. People worrying about the tech is that in this office, I can't be hardwired into the internet. Usually I'm ah, hardwired. So you're into the wireless internet. right now. I have to be right? on Wi-Fi, And so, you know, it's, it's okay, but it's not great. Um, you know, if you can get your stuff hardwired, I would highly recommend, you know, you don't do anything streaming without hardwiring it because you get these intermittent glitches um, when you're streaming. But that's that's the topic for today. The, the whys are pretty simple for me, right? You know, everybody wants to have, uh, everybody knows they need to have content out in social, on their website, um, on their blogs, on email. You know, the more times people see you, the more likely they are to trust you, the more they trust you, the more they buy, you know, from you. And, and the more they perceive you as the authority, right? So uh, when you when you start looking at a content plan, the, the easiest thing to actually do is create a show like this because then you've got the recording of the show 
And you can have somebody in a team. I mean, you can do it yourself, I guess, if you want to, but it's a lot of work. But you can have somebody in a team start to trim out these bite-sized valuable pieces of content and syndicate them across all these different channels. And it just gives your business, you know, that perception of being omnipresent, you know, which just naturally, you know, increases the credibility of what you're doing and your expertise in that area. And you can literally do one show like this a week and clip 10, 12, 15 different pieces of content from it instead of having to do them individually. Exactly. Exactly. And that's a, I'm glad you said that, right? So this, this, I guess you could say this sort of brings your brand to life when you can get your voice out there. We're doing video. So we're going to talk in a second about like the video versus audio or both or one or the other, but really the big why is, I'm going to leave it with this. It's, it's how to get your voice, your face, your name, your brand out into the marketplace where people can see it or listen to it on the go. The podcast thing is beautiful because so many people listen on the go. So what you've in done is you've tapped into the lifestyle of somebody. Podcasts have become like lifestyle media, meaning at the gym, taking a walk. I'm often like cooking or, you know, helping with the dinner type thing at home. And I'll have a podcast on my, you know, my wireless ear pod. So I have it in one ear and I can listen if someone asks me a question, but I'm listening to some content, right? I might be listening to like the last 10 minutes of a podcast if I'm getting ready in the morning. So when you can tap into somebody's lifestyle, in their movement, gym, car, office, home. It's a very big deal. Ads are different, right? We talk a lot about running ads. You can certainly run ads, but ads are more like interruption-based, right? An ad shows up while someone's doing something else. It can be perceived as annoying or it can be perceived as, hey, great, I needed this thing right now. But the podcast, if you can get into people's lifestyles and you can get into the way they move about society, you're in their ear. And it's a conversation in a vacuum, so to speak, meaning it's just you and them. And this is really, really tough to do today. Even TV makes it tough because the commercials are popping up all the time. And right, you can, you can, you, you know, there's a lot of distractions. But when you're listening to a podcast, and I'm thinking about one that I'm listening to right now, I listen to a lot of health and wellness related and, and, and medical and science related podcasts. That's kind of my, I guess, my interest, right? And by the way, we forgot to give them last week the shows we listened to. I, I promised in the beginning, we'll give you the shows we like and listen to, to you know, if, if you're interested in that. So we'll do that at the end. Remind me. But when I'm in, when I'm, when they're in my ear, I'm not thinking about anything else, right? It's a it's a one to one conversation. So so if you can get past the intimidating part of it and the tech part of it, and say, how do I craft a one to one conversation with my audience? You don't need to go big and broad like the Joe Rogan experience. We talked about this last week. You need to find a concept that resonates with your niche. If you're a personal trainer, most likely it will be exercise and fitness or muscle related. If you're an insurance agent, maybe it's going to be financial planning tips related. I mentioned last week, I have a client, great guy who's part of our X3 coaching group. You remember Troy. He's in the wealth planning business out of Texas. He's a big practice. They do annuities and planning. And he came up with a cool concept with our help called Two Guys Whining About Retirement. Yeah. But they spell it W-I-N-I-N-G because they they got a bottle of wine on the table. It's just two guys like you and I sitting at a table. They do it live. And they're whining, at a.k.a. ranting about retirement tips, having a conversation, drinking wine. It's so funny, Aaron. I, I was talking to him about it the other day. He's, he just got his – this is really important for you guys listening because you want to get business from this. He goes, Andrew, you'll never believe it. We only have four episodes live. And I just had someone call my office and book an in-person appointment with my team to buy an annuity. That's a big payday for them when they when they underwrite an annuity. I'm like, that's incredibly encouraging because you really haven't even gotten traction yet, right? You're just like, your team is just syndicating this out. We'll talk in a second about syndication, the tech behind that. But a, an appointment, like I saw your show. I wanted to call your office. I love what you guys are about. Can we meet? I mean, no resistance at all right there. The theme of our show is how to sell more with less resistance. If you want to sell more with less resistance... Get into a one-to-one -one conversation via a podcast with your audience and you win that game. And for some, they are only podcasting now. They've gotten so big. They're not running ads anymore. I don't suggest that. I, su I suggest diversification and having a portfolio approach. But man, it is it should convert to business left and right when done right. We'll show you how to do it right. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I, it's, it's creating your own audience. And when you can create your own audience, then you're no longer really having to sell people that come to you because they already have consumed enough about you to have made a, a decision on your character and your professionalism and your expertise. Right. And you end up being an order taker. Well, they come right? pre-sold. 
right? I right. mean, who You're wouldn't want pre-sold prospects? People pay an arm and a leg for pre-sold prospects when they buy leads or they buy data, right? Yeah. I mean, and, and those are, that's not even pre-sold, right? It's kind of pre-sold. This is really pre-sold. Uh, and, and this works both ways, right? Start your own show, but also make it a, a, a goal this year to get on other people's shows. Mm -hmm. When I go on other people's shows, it's basically them ordaining me as an expert right? by even having me on the show. Exactly. Right. And the thing is, is when you start your own show and you say, I've got a show and then you go to go to another people's show, they go, oh, you got a show. You, you got a show. I got a show. Maybe we can swap. You, you right. know how the game works. You know, all those good things. Right. So in that example right there, perfect example, you basically get to tackle two audiences in that example. You have your own with a guest coming on. And then if you hop on their podcast, right, then you get in front of another audience that maybe you never would have got in front of before. So there, you're right. I'm glad you brought that up. There's two ways to play it. You can sort of go on offense and defense, if you will, right? It's a really yeah. good good one-two punch strategy. The funny thing I'll tell you about that story about Troy is he's like, I said, Troy, how many do you guys record at a time, right? Because some people take on the approach of, like you and I do it once a week in real time, right? Yeah. Some people will get in their studio and they'll record like three or four episodes at a time. And then yeah. that's like the month ahead. So there's there's yeah. that, that, um, that batching strategy as well. But he goes... Mm -hmm. I got to be honest with you, we can only do two or three at a time because we're drunk by like the third episode because it's a whole <laughs> bottle of wine goes down. I'm like, wow, I never thought of it because we're really drinking. I never actually thought about that. He's like, oh, yeah, no, four is the most because we're like on the floor on number four. <laughs> yeah, by number three, they're just saying stupid number stuff. Number three, yeah, they're, they're slurring their words. Anymore. But he's like, man, it loosens us up a lot and uh, we really, you know, have fun with it. So listen, you know, take this with a grain of salt, folks, right? Drinking alcohol on your podcast, optional. It loosens Dude, there's you a, up. There's a really popular show right now called Drunk History. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's a bunch of guys talking about history who are hammer smashed. Is and that right? They hammer have a very popular show because of it. Is that right? Yeah. The cool thing about a podcast is, you know, it's your, it's your, it's your environment. You can do what you want. Um, but again, I think you understand the importance of it. Let's talk about how to do it now. Let's talk about the the how. So, two things I want to address right out of the gates. Number one is, do you do video like we do, or do you just go audio? And the video thing obviously makes it a little bit trickier and it makes it a little bit more intimidating because now you're on screen. So you have to show up and dress and present and, you know, you have to, you have to get the video part right. Aaron and I have a ton of video experience, a ton of onstage experience, a ton of speaker training. So for us, it's a natural progression that we want to do video. And obviously we take the audio and we syndicate the audio portion as well. So if you have training in this area, great. If you don't, if it's awkward for you, if it's tricky for you, don't worry about it. Go audio. I could literally be off the screen right now and using the exact same mic. These mics are simple to get on Amazon, right? Path of least resistance. Grab a mic. You could even grab your iPhone and you could grab the ear pods that come down. It's all really good sound. And you can just get the audio portion going and maybe grow into the video portion. The reason the video portion is big today, though, is because it gives you the ability to be on YouTube. And it gives you the ability to be on video-based platforms in addition to audio-based platforms. So you grab like another layer of media when you do video and people like to watch in addition to listening. So I would say video optional, audio bare minimum, obviously a podcast is audio and just go, right? Get, get, get a thought on a piece of paper, talk into your phone, grab a mic like this, get it recorded. If it's just you, great. If it's you and a guest, obviously you can set them up on Skype or you can get on a, a Zoom. Works well. I was on one yesterday. They did it with Zoom. So I was on their Zoom. They were doing the podcast. He had one of his production guys on with him, right? We'll talk about team here in a minute. And we just talked. Rough and raw. They go cut it up, but now they have a video and an audio version of the show. So I would say, Aaron, audio, path of least resistance, quick, down and dirty first. Yeah. And it's also the most important part. If you've got bad audio, don't even start, right? Like you got to have a plus mic. You got to have great sound quality. Anytime somebody puts up a video or they do a podcast and they're, they're recording it off the microphone inside their computer or inside their phone, instead of having a professional, you know, decent mic. And when I say professional, decent mic, I mean, it's a couple hundred bucks, yep. right? Or a, a lab mic or whatever. I, I don't even listen to it anymore. The audio is key. So let's talk about quality now, right? So if you go the audio route, which really you should do, because it will, it, what we do here will hold you up. What Joe Rogan does where he's bringing people into the studio, Dave Asprey does this as well with the Bulletproof Radio podcast, one of my favorites. It's now called, I think, the Human Upgrade podcast. But bringing people in live, right? They, they grow into that, right? They're, they're now treating it like TV. Aaron and I are in different parts of the world. I'm in Florida. He's in the Cayman Islands. So we're doing, 
and we're in we're in some pretty sophisticated software. We're not on Zoom, so I'll share that software in a little bit as well. But audio is quick. I'm on a big mic here that is, let me see if I can give you the brand. Aaron, you're on the Yeti. Are you on the Yeti mic? I think you have a Yeti, right? So hold yeah, that up because that's the, the most blue. popular podcast mic, the one you have. Mine's a little bit more like radio style. If you can hold yours up, everybody's seen it. It's pretty cool looking. It's called the Yeti. Yeti blue, I think, right? Perfect. Yep. So if you're watching the show, it's called the Yeti. You can see it on the on the video. If you're listening, it's Y-E-T-I, Yeti blue mic. Google it, Amazon it. $100, I think, maybe $200. That's the most popular podcast mic. Get your settings right, plug it into your computer, and literally you can just start recording right onto any kind of audio software. Audacity is one that comes to mind as a free resource. We'll link all of this in the show notes down below. Yeti, Audacity. Again, mine is one of those big towering mics that you see here, kind of a, a radio style mic, way more expensive, probably not a good starter mic, but uh, something maybe you grow into. So there's the audio piece, which is everything. Video, we'll shelf that for a second, but now let's talk about content and theming and what do we do? And this is the second biggest roadblock, I think, after the tech is, well, I would never know what to say. Well, what am I going to talk about? And I always like to like to respond in a different way. And I say, you have so much to talk about, you're going to run out of things to talk about. You're just not talking about them ever. So you don't know what to talk about, right? As a business owner, as an entrepreneur, all you do is talk about your business. So how do you now transfer that into a conversation that would resonate with the public? And, and, and again, not necessarily about your business, but more so on the back end, how can your business solve some problems or fill some gaps for people? Yeah. And the thing is, I think that people overanalyze this part of the equation because they think they have to be scripted or they yeah. think they have to be perfect or they think they have to, you know, I don't know, maybe be like a professional radio host or whatever. The reality is, is that we would have these same conversations that you and I are having on this show, which is why it's nice to do it with two people. Yeah. Like one person is fine, but two people, there's a little bit more back and forth. It's a little bit more interesting. So if you can find somebody to partner up with, it would be ideal, right? Um, it, we would be having this conversation, drinking a glass of wine or having a beer or whatever. This is, this is what we talk about. So if you can sort of just stay in the, in the mindset of, I'm just going to have the same conversations about my business or industry that I would have with anybody just normally sitting in my living room, right? It takes a lot of the pressure off of you. Yeah. And that's why, and that's why the, the most common format I'm bringing up my, I'm trying to bring up my, um, uh, my formula for content here as we're talking. And that's why the, the guest the guest model is the most popular model because as soon as you have someone else on, you and I don't bring on guests all that much. We're just you know talking sales and talking business, talking scale and talking whatever. That's our model. I've seen models where it's quick 15, 20 minute from the, the show host. But the most popular model, of course, of all is the interview model. We know this, right? So lining up guests becomes a big piece of the puzzle as well. I like the combination of both where you have guests but you also maybe do a little quick one-on-one, -on -one, five, 10 minute blast as well. I think I mentioned last week, I listened to Russell Brunson's podcast, which used to be called Marketing in the Car, right? Let me just try to get out of this here. And I think it's called Marketing Secrets Podcast right now. And he does like these 15 minute quick, here's what I'm working on. Here's what we're doing this week. Like right to the point, quick little blasts when he's in his car driving to the office. I mean, talk about down and dirty, rough and raw, Nothing fancy. Sometimes you hear the background noise of the car. So not even worried about audio. I'm not saying the audio is bad, but you definitely know you're, he's in the car and he's you know on the way to on the way to wherever he's going, right? Well, and the nice thing about what he's done there is is he was obviously looking at that that commute back and forth to the office, saying, "How do this I leverage this space. commute?" Right? Right? This is dead space for him for efficiency, right? And he was probably thinking about all these things that he wanted to do when he got there and these ideas and maybe conversations he'd had the day before and right. how he was going to implement them. And he just said, let me just fill this dead space with exactly what's going on in my brain. And and I'm basically just downloading it for free to my customers and right. filling this, this commute time. Yep, exactly. And what he often does, which I think is pretty cool, he's one of the few that does it this way is – he basically will talk about what he's headed to the office to work on today. So, you know, he's always talking funnels and things like that. So he's like, yeah, you know, we're working on this new funnel project today. Or we're doing this. So there's, there's, there's kind of that. I like that look over my shoulder approach, 
which is what that is, right? This would be great if you're in fitness, right? Hey, you know what? Today's workout consisted of this or today's diet regimen consists of this. If you're in a, like a demonstration style business, the look over the shoulder aspect works pretty well. Obviously, the guest aspect works pretty well. If you can partner with someone like we do or like Troy, our client did, right? That's pretty cool because there isn't the awkwardness in the dead space of not knowing what to say next because you complement one another. And that happens quite a bit when you have guests on your show as well. So the guest model is great. However, the guest model requires another layer of work of constantly lining up guests. And that's probably not something you want to do, right? So let's talk about team now and getting this all put together. Go ahead. You, you were going to say something while I'm bringing yeah, this up. Yeah, and, and, and you don't have to be um, constrained by what other people are doing. Like I know another marketing agency. Um, I'm, I, I know the person. I'm not, you know, really, really tight with them, but I know them. And their podcast is basically reviewing ads that suck. And ah, they, okay. They, they basically have these guests come on and the guests will bring with them three or four or five ads that, that suck. And they'll talk through why they suck and how they could be improved to get better results. And it's sort of that over the shoulder concept that you're talking about, right, right. but which is a different angle is they're just going to rip stuff that sucks. Kind of like our sales prevention department episodes we do. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm going to share these pillars here, Aaron. I found this doc I was looking for. Uh, I'm not going to share it. I'm going to say it. We'll put it in the show notes. Um, there's three pillars for what's called podcast marketing, authority marketing, TV show marketing. The first one is what's called you-driven content. So this is what we're talking about now. Like it's just you. Look over my shoulder. Here's what I'm up to. Here's how this affects you. Tips and ideas. Really just... It's kind of like what Aaron and I are doing right now. It's us, you, us, talking about a concept today at being podcasting to, to grow your business, right? The second pillar is what's called news-driven content. So what's going on around the world that you can comment on? It's called newsjacking, hijacking, aka newsjacking. So at any given time in your space, you might say, and I, there's, a, there's a guy that I listen to that does a great job of this. There's a great book that I've read over the years and all of his work called The Power of Zero, uh, by a guy by the name of David McKnight. He's in the financial services space. And he does, you know, the real advanced, you know, dividend paying index life insurance policies. And he calls it the power of zero because it shows you how to get to the 0% tax bracket in retirement. And he does these 15 or 20 minute podcasts. And he's just talking about like, what's like one thing going on in the news when it comes to new tax IRS uh, loopholes, going, uh, changes to the IRS code, tax-free strategies, something going on. He'll just come out and say, hey, you know, last week the Federal Reserve passed a new debt law or the Federal Reserve is, you know, on track to raise interest rate. What would that mean to your retirement? So he's taking something from the news. He's giving himself a talking point. And then we all know that if we're given something to talk about, we can probably talk about it for 20 minutes and relate it to our business. That's a really underutilized piece that I love that I think isn't used enough and it's called newsjacking. Current events, what's going on in the media, how can I tie it to my business as the solution and just maybe make an episode about that. That's number two. And yeah, number and this is really relevant, right, too. So when you have a headline <laughs> on something, people are going to resonate with it because it's relevant and it's current and they want to know more about it. And you just find a way to subtly tie it into your business or industry, right? right? Well, we did it last week. So we news jacked last week. We said, okay, Let's take the Joe Rogan experience, which is now the number one rated podcast or the highest viewership podcast in history. If you saw that episode, it's exceeded primetime TV news network, Fox News. One of the one of the Fox News channel was number one. I think it was Tucker Carlson beat it by a fourfold. How is that happening? Why is that happening? Well, that was in the news. The Nielsen ratings came out. It was newsworthy. I caught the news and I said, oh, my God, Aaron, this is insane. How is a podcast exceeding a primetime TV news network? We need to look into this, but we took that news and we did a whole episode on it. That's called newsjacking. There's always something out there that you can look at, analyze. Another thing that we do on this show is we will look under the hood of businesses or brands. That was sort of what we did last week. We did it with Tom Brady's TB12 sports company last year. And we said, hey, how, how is this world-class athlete still playing football at 43? How, how is he running this successful company? Obviously, he's not running it, but how does he have this successful company? And what's this TB12 method? We essentially just took something newsworthy and talked about it. That's number yeah, two. Think, right. Even before the show today, we were talking about how Starbucks just took a stance against all the mandates and nonsense. There you go. It's a business topic that we could go into and talk about how that will affect their culture, their sales, their attraction to new people, yep. their repelling of other people. How would it impact their business? Right? And that's a big one right now. So like during this whole COVID mess going into year two without really much of a change here, 
is you're starting to see companies go, listen, we can't keep just mandating, enforcing, and coercing. And you're starting to see a lot of that lifting now. So how would that relate to your business? It doesn't necessarily relate to what we would talk about, but it's a good point. It's so front of mind newsworthy. An old copywriting principle that I learned early on is how do you enter the conversation already taking place on people's minds? That's the big question. How do you how do you enter the conversation already happening? That's a big conversation. So if you're in business and your business may be affected by, you know, mandates, whatever the case, maybe you could talk about that, right? You could blend that into a conversation. And the third piece is what's called relationship driven content. And that's what we talked about a second ago. That's guests. That's me and Aaron talking. That's you bringing someone on and interviewing them. That's the most common form of podcast. However, I like the trifecta here because it gives your your podcast a little bit of balance and it makes it a little bit unpredictable. When I see shows that is just guest after guest after guest after guest after guest, I still listen to it. I still like it. But sometimes if I don't like the topic, I might move on to something else. Well, right. I'm just or switching I, it up from time to time to yeah. make it more entertaining. And the more entertaining you are, the more people are going to show back up to listen or watch more, right? Exactly. Exactly. So if you can blend this little formula, again, we'll put it in the show notes, right? You-driven content, maybe just you talking about a concept, news-driven content. That's content handed to you on a silver platter and you just talking about it. That's the news. That's the media. That's news jacking. And the third piece is interview-based, relationship-driven content. Those are the big three. There are no shows that operate really in any other format than one or two or three of those formulas. And those are the pillars to, I guess, the biggest complaint we hear is I would not know what to say, right? I don't know how to craft content. I'm cool with speaking. I love doing the mic. I have the tech, but what am I going to talk about? This is it right here. These are your three areas and you could probably rotate it. You could choose one or the other. You could go all in on one, but that's going to give you, it's going to give you a little life preserver, if you will, on the content. Um, all right. What else? Content mapping. Anything else you want to add to the you news relationship? No, content? I don't think so. I think people are always, you know, I think people can figure it out if they spend a little time on what they're actually going to talk about. I think sure. where people have the biggest challenges is what is what equipment is needed, what software is needed, and then what do I do with the show to syndicate it, you know, to the highest level. So I think if we covered those three pillars in depth, then I think that people will get value from today. Let's get into syndication as the last piece now, because now what happens when you have, let's say two or three shows in the can, you just, you did what we said, you got uncomfortable, you made some audios, you have these raw files sitting on your computer, right? Some people have these raw files sitting on their computer for like two years. Man, I just don't know what to do with the content now, right? So let's leave off with what do you do? So now obviously it needs to be syndicated. You need to get a hosting account for your podcast. Uh, Buzzsprout, Libsyn come to mind. We use a company called Buzzsprout, I believe. We can put this in the show notes. I'll have Aim and our social media manager just lay out like our formula of all the tools that we use. So you have to have your podcast hosted somewhere and that hosting will, would then, you choose from the hosting account how to link the audio to Apple, Google, Stitcher, Amazon, Spotify, right? You choose, right? There's so many of them. You can syndicate to one or 10. I think we syndicate to maybe six or seven at this time. So again, your one piece of audio gets multiplied into four or five different forms of media. So that's another big factor here is you're not just gonna end up in one place. Your one piece of content could end up in 10 places, which means you your effort is, you're getting a 10X effort on on, on one thing, which is, I think, a lot, a lot don't think about that, Aaron. They think, oh, I'm gonna do a podcast and it's just gonna be out there. No, 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 it's gonna be out there in however many places you want it to be. So you truly will get a five, 10, 15 X return, in some cases, on your your voice. So that's uh, yeah. I mean, I yeah. want to put it everywhere anybody's at, right? I want to put it in my email. I want to put it in my social. I want to put it on all those those channels. Mm -hmm. I want to put it in a newsletter if I've got it. I might even run it in ads exactly. to attract new new viewers and new listeners. There's a there's there's so many ways you can syndicate one piece of content and get extreme value from it. Exactly. So now that's the syndication piece. Now, I know you might be thinking, I'm too busy. Who's going to do it? I don't want to do it. Well, maybe you just do it at first for a couple episodes and you get the formula down. Right? I'm always a big believer that you get your hands dirty, you get in there, you do the thing first, and then it gives you a process, it gives you a standard operating procedure for you to then hand it off to a virtual assistant or even a podcast production company. The big wave going on today, Aaron, and I get pitched like twice a week, is podcast production companies are everywhere. They will take your show and for either 100 or a couple hundred bucks an episode, it could be as low as 50 an episode, right, depending on how complex it is, is their video and audio, you could hire a production company that will charge you on a per episode basis 
to literally take the audio, cut it up, edit it, clean it up, put an intro and an outro on it, get it syndicated, get everything done for you turnkey, and you're out. You just, like us, what we do is we record every Friday. We know our topic a few days or a few weeks in advance. We do our thing, and we're literally out. We're not touching one piece of tech. Our social media team will cut up the video. We do trailers throughout the week on social. The actual show will go to YouTube first. That's number one as a video. Then the audio gets pulled out. It's really simple to pull out audio from a video. It will go on to six or seven different podcast syndication networks next week. So there's like a checklist of items that she goes down and does in the days following the podcast in production-like fashion, in syndication-like fashion, because this really is a show. And when you record it, it's now time to get it into as many platforms as possible. And that's going to take some work. There is work to be done on the syndication piece because if nobody sees it, if it isn't visible, then it's pointless. Maybe what you could talk about a little bit, just so we don't have open loop here, is the type of camera that you use and why we do video and maybe what are, what are the benefits. Like, for example, we, we use video because we share it live into a group, you know, on a, on a weekly basis, you know, I use a Logitech 4k camera, you use a different camera. Like why, why should people be entertaining video? I mean, I know they can start with audio, but what, what's the benefit of doing video? Yeah, as well? obviously as, as mentioned, the benefit of going video is you get the video platforms in addition to the audio platforms, right? So the, the, the chief reason we do TV like this, and we go live in the Facebook groups, we're actually leveraging social media is the first thing we're leveraging because at the time of this recording, it was live on Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern in the Facebook group. So that this is happening in like a social media TV show like format. Then the video gets taken and put onto YouTube. So now we're into the YouTube atmosphere or, or ecosystem, right? And now that video is out there. It's doing its thing. We run some traffic to it. It's there. It's building our channel. Then she strips out the audio, which is a little bit labor intensive. That might take an hour or so. And then it gets into the audio platform. So the benefit of video is you get another layer of visibility with all the video platforms. I'm even seeing in Spotify, we were looking at Joe's show. Um, I didn't know Spotify had video. I was watching his his episode on Spotify thinking I'm going to listen. And I'm like, wow, these guys are sitting at the table on, on video. So Spotify now has a video component and, of course, an audio component as well. But now what's happening, this is interesting, is a lot of the podcast platforms do have a video component for the reasons we're talking about. And now when you do a video version, which again, might be a step two, you now end up in these platforms in both audio and video, which means you're getting double exposure again because some people just don't like audio they want to watch. Other people will never watch. I hear people say this all the time. No, I never watch you guys on video. I'm too busy on the go, but I always listen on the go, right? We talked in the beginning about being in that one-to-one -one conversation when people are on the go. It. I will never listen to a podcast. I will only watch a podcast. So That's, you're appealing to different demographics of people. You you only listen, you said? I, I will never listen only, ever. I only will be a fan of a podcast if they have a video component. So there's two different types of people. You're more of a listener. I'm more of a watcher, right? And so having both of them allows you to actually appeal to two different demographics of an audience. Yeah, that's the multimedia strategy we talk about a lot on sales velocity as a whole is how can you get in front of your audience in multiple different ways because everybody consumes in multiple different ways. Some people are just audio. Some people would never, like you said, video, no audio. Some people like to read. So you see like fully transcribed shows now. I've seen that model too. We don't fully transcribe our show. But I've seen podcasts do that where the show is transcribed on a web page. There's a PDF download. I see show notes mostly, bullet points, right? So um, you get a text play as well. Remember, once you have the piece of content recorded, whether you go video or not, fine, great. You get the video play. But this can be fully transcribed. You can have a team overseas for a couple dollars an hour, fully transcribe it, create a nice PDF, do full-on show notes, or just take the key bullet points out of the show. And now you have a text version or a summary yeah, or a cliff night of your show. Like we do. What? Now you have a blog post. Like a we blog do. post. Exactly right. Good point. So now you have every show becomes a blog post with either a full transcription or show notes or a summary. But again, in, the, in our example right here, like full-on, video starts the, the, the show. Now you have the video platforms. Audio gets pulled out. And then it gets converted into text. And again, it would take a team to do this. There's plenty of people that can do this for you. There's podcast services, writing services, transcription services, full-on production companies that even do the text blog PDF version. Doing show notes is pretty common with these production companies. 
right? We have an in-house team. Like we have somebody who's full-time that does this for us because this is happening across the Sales Velocity brand, the Pipeline Pro brand, which is our software company that that powers the show, my Andrew Cass brand. So she's doing three brands. Um, so that's a, it's a full-time thing with podcasts, syndication, social media, posting, cutting up the videos. So if you just look at our show, you can start to see the framework of how we do it. And it doesn't end when the show ends. When the show ends, that gives you a whole bunch of content for the week ahead. So our week ahead will be bits and pieces of this current production, which fuels social media. So now if you're also the kind of person that goes, man, I know I need to, need to use social media, but what do I do? Where do I get the content from? Well, we loop back here. This is your core content. This can be cut up in text. She grabs blurbs, quotes, ideas, trailers, two minutes, six minutes, in, uh, you know, Instagram trailers, short ones, long ones, YouTube, like the whole week is filled with, hey, if you missed the last show, here are some of the, here are some of the things you missed in little bite-sized pieces of content with a link back to the show. So this becomes a whole big self-perpetuating marketing machine when done right. I know that's a mouthful here towards the end, but I, I want to get you thinking past, this is just a quick audio and I'm going to quickly put it on the internet. No, it is a whole big spider web effect when done right. Yeah, I, I think it's a great foundation to work off of. And, and like I said earlier in the show, when you have a show, it's even easier to get booked on other people's shows and get guests back and forth. And now you're creating your own audience, you're tapping into their audience. Um, and, and I've just had so many clients come to me just to sort of tie a bow on this whole thing. And they say, I saw you on such and such a show, or I heard about you. So I did some research and I watched 10 of your episodes. And then I reached out to you and I really feel like you're the person for my thing, right? And, and that, you can't buy that level of credibility and quality of a lead in really any other format that I know. No, you can't. And, and I hear it all the time as well. I had somebody told me the other day, you know, I love your, by the way, I love your show. I binge watched. <laughs> I, listen, when you get binge watched, man, you're like at the Netflix, you're, you're in like Netflix territory now, Right. Um, I binge watched the the first 10 episodes and right. I wanted to just kind of, I saw the topics on the website, right? So this becomes a website. Your, your, your podcast or your show becomes its own website as well, right? This can become a brand within the business. If you treat it, if you think big and think next level and you're thinking about how can I make this become a brand within a brand, um, it certainly can become an extension of your brand. It can live on its own web platform. It can have its own blog post. It can have its own audio, video, YouTube channel, Instagram channel, Facebook channel. I mean, if you want to go big, the show can become its own brand within your own brand. If you want to just make it a compliment to your brand, obviously you have that aspect as well. But, you know, proof of concept is here, which was really what we talked about last week when we saw those, those viewership numbers. And this is maybe worth watching. Again, this is the tech piece. I think the last piece of tech I'll give you is for this video version of the show that you can see on salesvelocitytv.com, we are using a great software platform called Ecamm, E-C-A-M-M. -M. I don't know if it's ecamm.com, but you can Google it, Ecamm. And it basically puts us into a studio-like environment where right now you can't see my cockpit, but I'm running the show. We're side-by-side -side like on a Zoom. It's a little bit better quality because it's built for podcasting and, and doing live, it's called a live stream show, right? But down the left hand on the right hand side, Aaron, you can, I think, see it, right? Is I have camera effects. I can adjust the light. I mean, I could literally go, I'm going to do it right now, right? So I could go to Aaron and be like, hey man, you're, you need to be brighter. Look at me brightening this guy up over here, right? Or, you know, I can say, hey man, that was a really, um, really, um, where's my little sound thing, right? I usually have that, that sound thing, which is pretty cool. I think it's here. This is kind of funny. No, it's here, right? Hey Aaron, great point, man. You really, you know, Got to give you a round of applause. Like the sound effects over here, right? I got, got the, you know, party air horn going, right? I can add logos up here, right? So here's our here's our show logo up here. I just took it off. I just added it, right? You can put your name down the bottom and have like a, you know, like you see on TV shows, like a title tag across the bottom. So this is a really cool piece of software. It's a monthly subscription software called Ecamm that we use. This is professional live stream production. So our show is technically a live stream show, but again, the audio gets stripped out when we're done, and it is a true audio-based podcast that I think hits six or seven platforms. So research this stuff. We'll leave a bunch of the links and the resources in the show notes, but think big with this. Don't think about doing this gingerly. This can become, as I mentioned before, that guy, David McKnight, he builds his entire financial planning business, Aaron, with two things. 
his podcast once a week, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, called The Power of Zero, and his book, which is a bestseller called The Power of Zero, right? Starting to see where I'm going with this. I have a book that's a bestseller called Sales Velocity, shows called Sales Velocity TV and Radio. So if you're an author and you have a book out there, hint, hint, that book could become themed as a show. And frankly, you could be doing an episode a week on all 12 chapters of your book if you wanted. And really, you can just start to talk your your content and get that out there and get that into the you know, onto the world wide web that sits and lives forever. That could be a really good example of you driven content to kick things off. So the content's there, it's in you. You just oftentimes don't realize it because you're so close to it. Agreed. I think this was a great episode, Andrew. We don't often do like tactical, really heavy tactical stuff like this, but um, it's just becoming such a big proponent of our businesses that I think with part one, part two, uh, it's a great resource for our viewers and our listeners. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, salesvelocitytv.com. Probably get the video version because we did show a lot of things on this one. If not, audio is fine too. You can see the show notes down below. We'll link to some resources. Uh, and again, go back and watch the last one where we dissected the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. Just overall big picture. How did something like that happen? And this one, like you said, a little more tactical, a little more, hopefully some motivation on, wow, I needed this because I didn't realize it was it, it wasn't that intimidating. Because it really isn't. It's just a matter of getting some things organized, getting the tech in place. But again, I think the biggie, and I gave you the three pillars here in the middle somewhere. How do I structure content? That's the biggest roadblock. You should not have that issue anymore listening to this episode because I gave you the three little pillars of how to, how to organize and craft your content. So we'll see you on the next one. Aaron, Andrew, this one's a wrap. Over and out. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Sales Velocity TV is powered by Pipeline Pro, the ultimate all-in-one sales pipeline management and marketing automation platform that makes all others obsolete. And we can prove it. Take a tour at gopipelinepro.com. See you on the next episode.